The West is well known for exploiting the resources of small and emerging nations to fulfill its own needs. This hinders the growth and development of these nations and their citizens. This time, it has set its eyes upon a small South American nation, Suriname. The country has vast oil reserves that were discovered recently and that is exactly when it was doomed. Like vultures, the West, its organizations and lackeys descended onto the nation. Things are bad in Suriname. The president, instead of saying no to Western diktats, has left his people in enormous misery. Latin America needs to urgently wake up and take note of this before it gets too late. Hi and welcome to TFI Global Latin America, TFI Global's channel dedicated to the America in the Americas. I'm your host, Akanksha. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. And if you're watching us on Facebook, do like, share and follow the page. Let us begin with the video report. Anti-government demonstrators recently attacked the assembly house in Paramaribo, which houses Suriname's parliament. They smashed windows and wrecked the lobby. They alleged corruption in the president Santoki's government and demanded his resignation. Protesters tried to storm the premises while demonstrating against increased food, gas and energy prices. The government acted swiftly and rounded up the protesters. The president clamped down on the protest and warned against any such demonstrations in the future. Amidst all this chaos, people's suffering has taken a backseat. One of the smallest nations in northern South America, Suriname, has mainly remained unnoticed in world affairs. The country experienced a 54.6% inflation rate at the end of last year, signaling a severe economic catastrophe. It is one of the smallest countries in northern South America, which has largely remained obscure in geopolitics. In terms of area, it's half the size of Germany and a bit bigger than Greece. In the middle of this, Suriname got a golden opportunity to both combat the spiraling inflation and boost its economy. Several significant oil discoveries carrying millions of barrels of oil have been made off the coast of Suriname over the previous three years. In fact, it's estimated that offshore Suriname Block 58 has at least 5 billion barrels worth of exploitable oil resources, perhaps even as many as 6.5 billion. Over the past three years, one major oil discovery after another has been made on the coast of Suriname. An American firm Apache announced the first oil find off the coast of Suriname in January 2020. The partners then made two unprofitable discoveries in Block 58 and four more commercial oil discoveries. These oil deposits are like a golden goose for the nation. The president of Suriname, however, is killing the golden goose exactly like in that old tale. Suriname has now become a very vital country in international politics notably for the US, due to the oil discoveries. The United States was frantically looking for a way to access Suriname's oil riches. By electing Robert J. Froscher as the new ambassador to Suriname, the US set its trap. Robert pledged to make sure American companies could tap Suriname's huge oil reserves. Before his appointment, the new US ambassador to Suriname, Robert J. Froscher, made a shocking statement before the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He said Suriname is sitting on vast oil reserves off its coast. Froscher said that if he is confirmed as ambassador, he would make sure that American businesses have access to Suriname's substantial oil deposits. He said that the U.S. continuously faces challenge from PRC for oil deposits in Suriname. Froscher's appointment makes it clear what exactly the U.S. has in the bag for Suriname. The U.S. is using IMF as its weapon to target Suriname's oil through IMF's heavy loans and restructuring programs. It is expensive for a small country's government to oversee oil development, to evaluate and issue permits, to audit the development costs reported by companies, to provide services and related infrastructure, and possibly to buy government shares in the new oil operations, especially at a time when the cost of living in the nation is significantly rising. The International Monetary Fund IMF authorized a $688 million loan program for Suriname in late December 2021, with payments to be made from 2022 to 2024. 
The Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, also suggested budget financing totaling $300 million through three policy-based programs. The World Bank also suggested budget financing of $30 to $100 million. The US is only using the IMF's assistance to Suriname as a means of advancing its own self-serving objectives. That's US's way. What fuels the fire is that Suriname's government, which should lessen its dependence and partnership with them, is instead siding with the West. Even when the Surinamese people are vehemently opposed to the way the current administration is running in the country. If things remain like this, the impact of the West on Suriname will be devastating for both its citizens and economy.